Hello everyone, this is Medical Gateway and today we are going to start guidance chapter number 1 which is Functional Organization of the Human Body and Control of the Internal Environment. So let's start it. So the whole concept starts from homeostasis. Now what exactly is homeostasis? Homeostasis is the maintenance of nearly constant conditions in the internal environment. So basically it's the maintenance of nearly constant conditions in internal environment. Now what exactly is internal environment? It is the environment inside the body. One is your environment outside the body. And this is basically we're talking about the internal environment, environment inside the body. Okay. Now what exactly is this internal environment? It is the surroundings of the cell. It is the environment to which a cell is exposed. Now, the cell is exposed to what? The cell is basically exposed to the extracellular fluid and all the ions and electrolytes are the things in the extracellular fluid. So that's why internal environment is basically the extracellular fluid. The extracellular fluid makes the internal environment of the cell. So it, the homeostasis is maintenance of nearly constant conditions in internal environment. So let's discuss how many cells are present in the body. In the body there are 100 trillion cells. These are too much. Out of these 100 trillion cells there are 25 trillion RBCs and 75 trillion other cells. So RBCs, red blood cells, the blood cells which carry uh, which have ox uh, which have uh, hemoglobin and it carries oxygen. So they are 25 percent of the total cells of the body. So these are 25 trillion RBCs and 75 trillion other cells. Now, if we look into the fact that what is the percentage of solids in the body and what is the percentage of fluids in the body? So 40% of our body is solids and 60% of our body is fluids. Okay, so fluids are in greater quantity as compared to the solids. Now, 60% is the fluids and what is the further division of fluids? Now, fluids are divided into two types of fluids, intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid. Intracellular fluid is present inside the cell and extracellular fluid means the fluid present outside the cell. So, intracellular fluid is two-third of the total fluid of the body and extracellular fluid is one-third of the total fluid of the body. It means intracellular fluid is greater as compared to extracellular fluid. Okay, now further deviations of extracellular fluid includes. Okay, now before that, I have already told that internal environment means the extracellular fluid. So that's why extracellular fluid is also known as internal environment or milieu interior. Okay, now extracellular fluid is further divided into two things interstitial fluid and the blood okay extracellular fluid the fluid outside the cell is further divided into interstitial fluid and the blood so interstitial fluid is three fourth of the extracellular fluid and blood is one fourth of the extracellular fluid the fluid outside the cells is basically blood and interstitial fluid Okay, so blood is one fourth of extracellular fluid and interstitial fluid, the fluid between the cells, which is basically surrounding the cells, is th three fourth. Okay, okay, now let's discuss the concentration of different ions in intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid. Now, in intracellular environment, potassium ions, magnesium ions, and phosphate ions are in abundance as compared to the extracellular environment. So potassium, magnesium and phosphate are in greater quantity in the cell, inside the cell as compared to outside the cell. Now what are the ions which are present in extracellular environment? So these are basically predominantly sodium chloride and bicarbonate ions. So in extracellular fluid we will talk about that these ions are basically present in the interstitial fluid. So intracellular fluid has potassium, magnesium and phosphate and 
extracellular fluid to be specific interstitial fluid has sodium chloride and bicarb in abundance as compared to the intracellular environment it doesn't mean that in, that intracellular environment doesn't have sodium chloride or bicarb it only means that these are present in greater quantity in the extracellular environment okay now now interstitial fluid also has carbon dioxide and sugar and fatty acids and amino acids now we are discussing the topic of homeostasis then why i'm i'm telling you about these ionic concentration and these sugar fatty acids and amino acids the point is this if you focus on the definition of homeostasis it is the maintenance of nearly constant conditions in the internal environment so it this means that these ions the carbon dioxide these the oxygen sugar fatty acids and amino acids they all have to be in a balanced state and if they are maintained at a nearly constant level that it means that homeostasis is working perfectly now who will manage the concentration of these ions and carbon dioxide and sugar fatty acids and amino acids so basically if we, if we focus on carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is managed by lungs for instance there is increased amount of carbon dioxide in your body the lungs will exhale this carbon dioxide out so carbon dioxide are helping in maintenance of the homeostasis by maintaining carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in the body then if you focus on sugar fatty acids and amino acids we want them to be in a balanced state in the body for instance if you eat food then the food is digested in the intestines and where does this these all these sugar fatty acids and amino acids go they go to liver by the entire hepatic circulation okay and the liver manages all these sugars fatty acids and amino acids okay now which organ will maintain a balance of sodium chloride and bicarb kidneys will maintain its balance of the balance of sodium chloride and bicarb so basically we are doing discussing homeostasis and we want to maintain a balanced ionic concentration a balanced oxygen carbon dioxide partial pressure a balanced amount of sugar fatty acids and amino acids inside the body or inside the uh, extracellular fluid or to be specific inside the internal environment uh as named in the definition of homeostasis so so this balance is maintained by all these organ systems working collectively okay so now you have to remember basically these percentages these are extremely important for your exams okay now let's move forward now i'm i'm just going to give a brief introduction of all the units which we are going to study in the physiology and by and large at the end every unit has its uh, function in maintaining the homeostasis now what is nervous system and what are the components of nervous system so nervous system there is a center which includes brain and spinal cord uh, then we have a sensory system and a motor system now for instance uh, you touch a pointed object and the sensory receptors in your skin are stimulated now the sensory receptors will be stimulated and through the sensory system the impulse will be sent to the center and the center will then again send an impulse to the motor system to the muscles that remove your arm from the painful stimulus so this is how it works one is the sensory system which deals with the sensations for instance like touch sensation smell uh, vision and hearing so these all are included in the sensory receptors they will send the impulse to the brain to the center and that will guide and that will uh, guide the motor system accordingly according to the uh, sensory sensation okay so then we have autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system is the system which is basically automatic now what does it mean it means that this system the autonomic nervous system is not in our conscious control so autonomic nervous system is extremely important because it controls 
almost all of the vital organs and their functions like heart rate like breathing like blood pressure maintenance all of these are maintained by autonomic nervous system which works automatically okay here above uh, for instance if you are moving your arm then your brain is sending a conscious impulse via a motor nerve to your muscles to move the arm so this is a conscious control but you just cannot simply control your heart rate or your blood pressure okay they are controlled by the autonomic nervous system now another system which plays its great role in maintaining the homeostasis is hormonal system now this hormonal system consists of basically eight major glands which secretes hormones and these and hormones are the chemicals which go to specific cells and control their metabolic functions now which, now i'm going to name three or four major hormones in the body there is a separate endocrinology unit where we'll discuss uh, all these hormones and all these hormones have a specific chapter uh, which we will discuss afterwards for instance we have thyroid hormone we have insulin we have we have adrenocorticotropic hormones we have parathyroid hormones now what is the function of thyroid hormone thyroid hormone is basically involved with increased rate of reactions what thyroid hormone does it basically kick starts every reaction okay when there is thyroid hormone it means there is high metabolic rate now what insulin does the famous insulin you all know that it reduces the level of glucose by metabolizing glucose then adrenocorticotropic hormone the stress hormones basically uh they are mainly involved with the protein metabolism and then parathyroid hormone which is involved with the calcium balance in the body okay so basically hormone system and uh, the endocrinology they all work collectively together to maintain homeostasis then we have immune system immune system is basically the defense system of the body it has wbcs thymus lymph nodes and spleen the spleen cleanses the blood lymph node cleanses uh cleans the lymph and then we have wbcs and thymus they all work together and they kill pathogens virus and bacteria okay then we have in tegumentary system now in tegumentary system consists of skin and and the appendages like nails etc so what is the function of skin it acts as barrier obviously and then it acts uh to regulate body temperature by sweating and then skin also uh, excretes some waste products out and skin also gives cushioning effect okay so these all functions for instance temperature regulation is a very important function which can be used in many examples of homeostasis this is mainly regulated by skin okay then we have reproductive system now how exactly the reproductive system has plays its role in maintaining the homeostasis it plays its role by production of new beings to create a balance in the world okay so this is a brief introduction of uh, the units which we are going to study in detail uh, so this was just an introduction there is a se separate unit on all of these topics which we have discussed in this part so this was part 1 of chapter 1 see you in next part